Hello guys, going to be going over the MLB prize picks May uh, 12th, Thursday uh, baseball slate. So looking back how we did on Wednesday, I'd say we did pretty good. Christian Yelich went for the cycle. We had a lot of other good plays. Tommy Edmond, um, the no run first inning props besides Miami um, and Arizona, which, you know, that one had great odds on it, just didn't hit. Um, but Alcantara, just a lot of props, you know, definitely went our way, so Hopefully we can continue that today. Uh, Thursdays, though, of course, MLB, there's not a lot of games because a lot of teams just have off days on it. Um, Thursday and Mondays. So first yeah. inning runs uh, allowed props. Just not really liking any of them. Like, there are eight games. All of them are on here. But you look at the pitchers. So the first game, like, you know, I mean, all of these games, really, you look through who's on the mound. I just don't really feel comfortable picking the under or the over on any of these like you know you got some probably one of the some of the weaker pitchers but um, even for the weaker pitchers like they're going up against bad offensive teams and then for the better pitchers they're going up against good offensive teams like Dylan C, Zach Wheeler so it's just a tough spot for today um, and I'll say this don't force anything like there's so much more baseball to be ha to be played. Like there's still another five to six months of MLB. You don't need to force any props. So not gonna give you guys any f uh, from here. I do have one strikeout prop that I'm gonna give, and that's gonna be James Caprillion over 4.5 strikeouts. So for this one, Caprillion ta uh, taking on the Tigers here. Caprillion this year, um, he's he, there's no stats right now because he hasn't really made enough appearances, but his K rate currently is 25.7, which is right in line with where he where he's been in his career. Now the Tigers, when you look at how where they rank, they strike out the tenth most in the league against right-handed pitching. Also, they're really bad, 71 WRC plus against righties. So hopefully that limits the trouble. Uh, Tigers they do have a lot of right-handed hitters, so that's gonna allow Caprillion to have the advantage. And just looking at overall, you know what his profile looks like. 24.2 K percentage, and then he does struggle against lefties. So that's why I think this could be not that bad of a spot for him because you look at this Tigers lineup, they have a ton of righties. Zach, or Austin Meadows, lefty in there. Ken Alario, uh, he does hit better as a righty though. So, you know, you're looking at some of these lefty bats, like they're just not really anything that's uh, uh, that troublesome. So, I like Caprillion for to at least maybe get five Ks. That's all we need. And he did hit almost a hundred pitches last start, so that's really good to see. Now pitching out some pitcher fantasy score, like kind of the same thing, just not anything here. Like I would rather take the strikeouts on Caprillion because you see possibly you know Meadows could definitely do some damage. So I feel like with a guy that has a pretty high expected ERA, that he can still get the strikeouts though and if he gives up earned runs we don't really care well we don't care about that because that's not part of uh the prop that we're taking now on to hitting fantasy score so they're a, a good bit here so first one's actually just going to be austin meadows so he's at six going to take the over on this i think for a number for hitters 6.5 or under it's really beneficial because you look at a single, if he, if someone gets a single, that's three, someone's on base, comes home, RBI five, and then if he himself comes around to score, that's seven. So for any prop that's going to be under 6.5, I think it's pretty appealing. That's why I usually don't take like 8.5s. But Meadows, as I've shown you, Caprillion struggles against left-handers. Like that WOBA is so much higher, ISO, everything. K rate a lot lower, walks guys, um, the hard hit rate is insane, nearly 50%, a lot higher than compared to against righties. So that's going to be really beneficial for Meadows, and he's projected it at second. Um, the A's, they're not supposed to be a good team. Um, don't know, or the, their bullpen has apparently been good, but we know that Oakland, they decided to tank the season, so don't expect that to continue. And Meadows actually has been hitting lefties, uh, getting at bats against lefties. That's what the Tigers want him to do. So there's no pinch hit risk here. So um, obviously you can't play Meadows and Caprillion together, but I would say it definitely makes sense to, um, you know, you have you can have both these pieces. It doesn't mean that you know it's one or the other. They're not mutually exclusive. So I like Meadows here. 
And then Brian Reynolds, he is also at 6.0. So Cincinnati is going to be pitching Connor Overton for this game. And uh, this game is going to be in Pittsburgh. But they still have a 4.4 run total, which is pretty solid. And Reynolds, he bats second, a switch hitter. Um, Connor Overton just, you know, not like, I would say he's not terrible. But you look at how Reynolds is as a hitter. He hasn't been... You know, that great this season compared to how he's been like in his previous years, but uh, like his all star form. Overton, yeah, like 4.15 x x fifth, that's not terrible. Um, lefties, that's where Reynolds is going to be hitting from. That's pretty significant for the splits on Overton. So, uh, you yeah, know, just a, a very hard, very high heart hit percentage. That's something that's going to be very helpful for these uh, pirate hitters. But yeah, expected ERA, like he's not. Again, he's not a bad pitcher, so that's why I think yeah you know, I would would say that I lean towards Reynolds, but not like one of my most confident plays. I think Vogelbach is also a lean because he's only at five, but like you know they could totally just put in a lefty later on in the game because they do have some lefties in this lineup. If they do bat Sisuko behind him, then you're going to be looking at definitely a lefty coming in to face these guys, and maybe there's some pinch hit risk. But that's why I would say just go with Reynolds here uh, as the pirate. And then Corey Seager, 6.5. So Seager, I think I talked about him like two or three videos ago, how he just has been getting unlucky. And since then, he's hit, I think, three homers. Um, and you look at his page, just a whole lot of red indicating that his real numbers are not where they should be. And still, they are too low. 294 expected batting average, only hitting 243. Um, just, you know, everything looks really good for Seegers, just, you know, the, it's the results that aren't there, but they're definitely getting there, and Corey Seeger today will be taking on a young pitcher in, I think it's Heasley, yeah, John Heasley, uh, again, game is in Texas, so gonna be very warm, they did close the roof, though, on Wednesday, so that, I would say, you know, we want it open, because it is warm, the wind's also blowing out, to make sure that it does benefit the hitters fully. But, I mean, Heasley, he's a youngster. He kind of has reverse splits. Um, but Seager, he hits lefties fine as well. So if that if it comes to that, it's totally fine. And this guy, he's been good all year. It's just recently how he it, it's the numbers that are finally popping up. So I think at 6.5, it's just not adjusted yet. And this number you're not going to get probably tomorrow or on Saturday or something. So um, I think this is one of the last times that you can get Corey Seager only a 6.5 projection. I'm going to take it. Now, because this game is such a good uh, hitter-friendly environment, as long as they do keep the roof open, Salvador Perez, 6 fantasy points. I'll take the over on this. He has been, I would say, not that great, to be honest, because his batting average is really low. Like, he doesn't walk. He's basically swinging for the fences. And you look at expected batting average of 210, just around the Mendoza line. He is actually under it right now. Um, but we know what he does. You know, he's a power-hitting catcher. That's what he does. He doesn't walk. He's always just, his walk percentage is so insanely low. He strikes out a lot, going to make a lot of hard hit uh, percentage or hard hit contact, but they're taking on Taylor Hearn, and Taylor Hearn has some pretty insane splits. So Hearn, he's a lefty. He allows just against righties. You look at the hard hit percentage, 49%, just really beneficial for any righty in this lineup, but I'm going to like Salvador Perez as my guy here. Just the power matches up with it, the weather, everything. Like, I think Bobby Witt is okay, but um, keep an eye on him if he does continue to lead off. Because Whit Merrifield had a great game. I don't know how soon they're going to reinsert him into the top part of the lineup. But Perez is going to be the play for the Royals. And then one last fantasy score play is going to be Kyle Schorber, under 6.5. He is, I would say, better against left-handed pitching now, but he's still... You know, when you're a lefty, some lefties just get neutralized. And there's going to be a lefty on the mound for the Dodgers today, Tyler Anderson. And um, Schwarber, as long as he's in the lineup, he's probably going to be hitting towards the bottom. 
because of a lefty lefty matchup and you're gonna probably see him hit against the righty maybe once or twice later on in the game but you know if you're taking a prop that you're only going to have the platoon advantage for someone that's that struggles against the same sided pitcher I like it because you're only going to get, you know, like half or even less than the at-bats that you usually would for someone that is capable of hitting both sides. So I like that 6.5, taking the under on this one. And then there's one hitting hits plus walks prop, and I usually put the under on this, but this one's actually going to be an over, and that is going to be Brandon Nimmo. 1.5 hits and walks over. So taking on the Nationals, um, John Adon, he is... Uh, someone who walks a ton of guys. Uh, I'll pull this up and then also his baseball savant page. So you're going to see he's a, well, he's also one of the young pitchers. 13.4% walk rate overall. Uh, 5.42 xFIP is pretty high. And then he does struggle. I mean, he's not great against righties either, but lefties. Like 395 Woba is insane. 250 ISO. Um, and then you look at his baseball savant page, like, that is horrible. I mean, so many of these blues under 10 percentile. And as expected, ERA of 6.9. Um, yeah, you know, high walk rate. That's going to help Nemo because you look at Nemo's walk rate, 14.2 overall. Um, and then for this season, yeah, I think it's like, it, I think it might be like 15 or something, like even higher than that 14.2 uh, number. So... You know, you do get the you, you get the hits and the walks part of it if um, Adon's just throwing balls to him. So that's the plus side. Yeah, 15.9% walk rate. Top 4% of the league. He's always been very good. Um, good eye. So I like the over on this. They do also have a high run total. So really like this prop. Um, you know, it's a rare sight for me to take an over on this. But I do think Nimmo looks pretty good here. And then we're going to go to runs and RBIs. Nimmo. Like him again, 0.5. Batting leadoff, just a lot of good run scoring opportunities there for a 4.8 run total. Probably going to be over 5 actually by game time. But the prop is going to be Tommy Edmond, 0.5 runs in RBIs. So Edmond also batting leadoff. Baltimore, no announced starter yet, but it might be Keegan Aiken, a lefty, who he's going to go 2 to 3 innings. He hasn't gone more than that. So you're going to get at most 2 at-bats out of Edmond. Um, he's a switch hitter though, and they do have Arenado and Goldschmidt, of course, Goldschmidt, Arenado behind Edmund respectively, and those two just hit lefties really well. So that's going to really help Edmund's chances of scoring a run hitting early on in the game. And if he doesn't, well, you know, Edmund can certainly do it um, later on in the game, switch hitter. Uh, the Cardinals are playing really well. They have uh, Dylan Carlson also. He's batting a lot better recently, so... Um, just overall, this Cardinals lineup looks to be in a good spot again against Baltimore and St. Louis. You know, the weather has been pretty warm out there. It's going to be warm again, 87 degrees, no run total yet, but I would expect them to have somewhere around a five run total. And if you look at Baltimore, um, their bullpen is about league average right here. Um, and then one more thing I forgot to show you guys. So for the walks, the reason why I'm taking Nimmo also is even after a dawn, the Nationals, their bullpen is tied for the sixth most walks. So another plus as to why you, you know, should look into taking uh, hits plus walks, even though it is 1.5, and I generally take the under on those. But I think this is definitely a good spot for Nimmo, though. Just everything backs it up. So I would say um, right now it, it depends on how these lineups shape out to be. Also, if there's any pitching changes and weather or whatever, because um, like today, starting Marte, the Mike Trout, like just some of these changes in the lineups that um, definitely did also change my picks. So I would say right now, um, Edmund is probably my favorite pick. Um, Seeger probably next. Um, Caprillion there as well. But yeah, always, you know, I'll do the same thing as I've always been doing, posting the picks and my most common plays on my Twitter. So make sure you guys do follow me on there because there are definitely probably going to be changes. Maybe some more props get added uh, later on uh, the day. So uh, again, you know, it's a Thursday. There are some early games. So make sure that you guys do get some of these bets in, um, especially like 
Nemo, some of these early games. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all the support once again. And good luck on this slate. And I'll see you on Friday. Bye.